Hello YouTube. How's everyone doing? This is a first review and initial impressions of the new TiVo Michelangelo. It's a small format printer. Uh, it's competition for the Creality Ender 2, which you can actually see here next to it. It has a 150 by 150 by 150 build volume versus the Ender 2's 150 by 150 by 200. It has dual cooling fans, factory, which the Ender 2 doesn't have any cooling for parts at all. And there's a pair of them here. As you can see, I've added the ducts, the same ducts I use on the Tornado. Um, it's an all-in-one design. So the power supply, everything is built into a nice steel box underneath of it. As opposed to the way the Ender 2 is laid out, it has a separate external power supply that's hard cabled to the rest of the printer. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying when you're transporting it around, etc. So it is a nice single piece build. It's extremely quiet. The fans are quiet. The steppers are quiet with the drivers they used. I believe this has the Gen L board with 4988s. They wanted to prove they don't have salmon skin, so one of the included prints, actually the only included G-code on the SD card, was a salmon skin print. So, and it looks pretty darn nice, I must say. The printer prints really well. Now, uh, it's a very solid build. In typical Tebow manner, there's no spool holder at all. They didn't even bother including the G-code on an SD card, which I think they should have. It is what it is. I, at least with Creality, I get that theirs is a little more of an expensive option because it's metal, but I wish Tebow would do something and not nothing as far as spool holders go. I didn't do anything with the unboxing because all you do is screw four rubber feet underneath the printer and no one needs to watch me screw four rubber feet onto the printer. So I, I skipped that for this video. Now, before I talk about its current state, we'll talk about I, I've got about 50 hours of printing on it. So as you can see, I saved some problems. And I saved them because I wanted to talk about them. So this printer has no heated bed. It does not have a heated bed. Uh, it comes with a different build surface than what I'm running right now. I couldn't tell you a fake tack, I don't know what it is, but a different build surface. And I don't like using tape and adhesives. It's not my thing. I don't use it on any of the rest of my printers because I don't print on glass. I always print on bed mats. So I don't like tape and adhesives. So, I gave it a good go, trying to get it to print on the stock bed mat. Small prints, like this one, for example, they printed on the stock bed mat. You can see the scrape marks where I took it off, but not too shabby. A decent little first layer, not great. It's got a little textured pattern from the bed mat. Here's another one. This one won't show as shiny. Actually, it does. So, there's another one. These are perfect prints that were on the stock build surface. Uh, this is another one. I was tweaking, as I was doing all these Yodas, I was tweaking retraction settings, um, a few different settings, temps, a couple different things. This one's not quite as good. I was still tweaking the bed on this one. So you can see that first layer is not as good. But anything with a print size like that worked out pretty well on this printer with the stock build surface. It adhered, it didn't come off, everything went great. Now, as soon as you get to something smaller or something larger is where the problems happen with the stock build surface. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we've got Baby Groot here. The hands have almost no surface area. The legs, not bad. They have something to grip. So when I was printing Groot, this hand right here came unstuck, stuck to the nozzle, and just got coated with plastic. So that's an example of a print too small, couldn't stay adhered to the unheated bed with the factory build surface. This print here is a long print. 
that actually eats up about 80% of the length of the bed. Well, the problem with this one, and you can see it, it curled up off the build surface. So this boat is a rocking boat. Look at it. Back and forth and back and forth. This was an early failure. This one came off because it curled. With the stock build surface, I printed this one, this little filament, and it came out pretty nice, but I printed him on tape because I could not green tape, in this case, not blue tape, over top of the stock build surface because I couldn't get his little boot grips to adhere. See how small they are. They were coming right off the build surface as soon as they got bigger, and I couldn't get a good filament, astronaut print, on the stock build surface. So, this one is one more. This was the first, this one didn't, look at it, it's still a rocking boat. Okay, so it came out okay. It didn't ruin the print per se, although there's some marks down here in the hull, down here where my thumb is, uh, where the plastic bunched up and kind of melted. So, you see it, it, it rocks, it shouldn't rock. This one shows the marks better. See the lines? That's from the part curling up and then the nozzle smashing into it and burning extra filament in addition to laying the string of filament that it was supposed to lay. You can see it on both sides. And that's directly related to the part lifting up off the bed. Now, I switched to a Gecko Tech Cold build surface. This build surface is meant to be used with no heated bed. It's reusable. They claim to over a hundred uses. All you do is wipe it with alcohol in between. And I must say, look at that skirt. It works amazing. There's not a need for, with this surface, there's no need for a heated bed for PLA. If you want to print PETG or ABS, this isn't the printer for you. But you probably already know that uh, without having a heated bed. For PLA, as long as you add this Gecko Tech Cold, wow, it's an amazing printer. So I'll show you two prints here. The one on the left, the blue one, was done on the Michelangelo this morning after I did some tweaking. The one on the right was done on the Ender 2. And to be quite honest, I think the Michelangelo could edge it a little. It at a minimum equals it. I think it might edge it in print quality. It definitely has superior parts cooling to the Ender 2. Being that it has dual parts cooling fans and the Ender 2 has none. So I got another couple prints to show you here, last couple. So this, after I switched the build surface to the Gecko Tech Cold, this Jungle Benchy I printed out on the Michelangelo. And look at how nice that came out. Really nice. This is, I, there's room to improve, don't get me wrong, this is not a perfect print by any stretch. I've only had the printer a week, and I'm still playing with the profile, but came out very nice. Look at the surface underneath. Look at that. A mirror-like finish on the bottom when printing on the Gecko Tech Cold on the Michelangelo. And needless to say, the boat doesn't rock at all. It's perfectly flat and stable. Another one. So after I put the Gecko Tech on, I had to see, well, will his fingers hold? Yeah, they held. Look at the shine. That The Gecko Tech leaves a really nice glass-like surface on the bottom of your prints. It adheres amazing and pretty much saved the day, I would say, for the Michelangelo. For me, anyway, because I don't like glue and I don't like to use tape. These are the last prints that I printed on the Michelangelo. This is probably not the best color filament 
for this stuff. It doesn't have a great shine to it. It's a, called a Cadet Blue from Paramount Filaments. Um, but they came out really clean. Very sharp. Look at the, even the bottom of the boots with the Gecko Tech. Wait till I get you the shine. I gotta get the right angle of the light in the room here if I can. Uh, looks like I can't. I tried. The bottom of the boots are completely shiny, just like the bottom of Brute, just like the bottom of uh, anything else that was printed on the Gecko Tech. Uh, here's one. This will really show it off. Even though this isn't a shiny, a super shiny filament, look at the bottom. Look at that first layer. Wow, super shiny. I mean, that's a nice print. This is a really nice printer. Tebow did a really nice job with it. I was prepared to not like it, uh, primarily because of the lack of heated bed. And then my first, I'd say two days with it, three days. I probably gave three days with the factory build surface before I finally gave in. Um, I mean, everybody's answer, I went to the forums and everyone's answer was, oh, well, use tape, use hairspray, use something else. And I didn't want to do that. So I switched to the Gecko Tech, and wow, it should be included with the Michelangelo. Because if you included a spool holder, Tebow, and a sheet of Gecko Tech, this printer is a winner. It's, it prints arguably better than the Ender 2. It's sturdier than the Ender 2. It has far superior parts cooling to the Ender 2. Now, yes, it costs a bit more. So, would I pay list price for the Michelangelo versus uh, Ender 2 sale price? Probably not. Would I buy the Michelangelo on sale over an Ender 2 on sale? Yeah, all day long. Very nice printer, I must say. Um, very unkit-like. Just ready to print right out of the box. I've only got three mods on it. Two fan ducts, which are linked underneath the video. A X gantry, well, technically it's the Z gantry, I'm sorry. A Z gantry wire support brace so that you detach your wires from your Bod Bowden tube. And then the filament holder. So, that's it. It really doesn't need anything. Uh, the bed knobs are horribly small. But this unit has a unique belt system down here. You can't really see it. Hey, you can see the knob by the belts. See that? How close that's getting? You can't really put larger knobs, at least not back there you can't. You might be able to on the front. That's another unique feature of this versus the Ender 2 that I almost forgot to talk about real quick. Is this unit uses optical end stops. So it does not have mechanical end stops. The Ender 2 has a mechanical end stop. And this one has optical for all the end stops. So, very nice printer. I'm very happy that I got it. Uh, it's neat, compact, sturdy. It prints amazing. Uh, I think Tebow's got a, a, a winner in terms of quality, in terms of build, in terms of... The only thing I would, would say is for the price they ask, it should have a heated bed. I would say that, and I can't... It should have a heated bed for the price they ask. If this thing drops on sale to end or two sale prices, say 160 a pop, this thing is an absolute winner and a beautiful, beautiful printer. I really like it. It's a very nice addition to my collection. Um, it's going to get moved over on the other desk near the Delta and the i3 Mega so that I can make room for the second tornado in the series of videos that's coming on that. So please subscribe to be notified on our pending uh, tornado build, tweak, and tune videos. Uh, we also still have, on my linear rails haven't arrived yet, but as soon as my linear rails arrive, I have my filament video coming, that I'm going to use the linear rails to, to pan the camera, basically, for the video. So when they arrive, I'm up to 56 different filaments for that video. So that should be interesting. Um, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I hope you have a good one. Please subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye.